Batgirl has been working together with Batman for three years when they had to help stop a pair of burglars from getting away. Batgirl blows up the back of the getaway truck, and Batman pulls out the stolen vehicle. The two drivers get away and pay a visit to Gotham's crime lord, who happens to be Paris' uncle, and he is not happy with their failure. Now he has the bats breathing down his neck, so he orders them to get back the $100,000 they lost him. Batgirl shows a friend of hers the live feed city cameras her dad is working on. They notice a suspicious individual, who turns out to be one of the truck drivers from the night before. One of the truck drivers discovers that his partner is stealing money from their boss and his own uncle, and believes they'll get away with it, since he's as old as a dinosaur. Batgirl interrupts them, and ignores his request to meet her personally. He says fighting her won't be any different than fighting any other girl, and doses her with knockout spray. She locks herself in the vault before passing out. Batman says she should have waited for him, and tells her his name is Paris France. She thinks he's joking, but he's not. His file also explains that Paris is a narcissistic sociopath that will keep you smiling until the moment he slices your throat. Batman reiterates that she should not go near him alone, and since she wants to work with him, she must do what he says. She explains the awkward relationship to her friend, Reese, in a metaphorical way, referring to hero business as a yoga class. Reese asks why she can't just find another yoga class, and she says there isn't another one. She gets a little worked up and yells that she's the best student he ever had, even if he can't see it. The pair of thieves are on a yacht with the Uncle Crime Lord's stolen money stashed on board. The nephew is enjoying himself and getting overly confident. He says that he's just gained access to every offshore account his uncle owns, when suddenly, they're under fire. The masked gunners board the boat, but the nephew and his accomplice have escaped by diving with wetsuits. Batgirl receives a video message from Paris, France, continuing his flirtatious demeanor towards her. He says he bought her a gift that she'll find where they first met. She thinks it's sweet that he likes her, but Batman says it's not sweet, that he's objectifying her, and he's clearly not afraid of her. He tells her she's off the case, and goes to where he said the gift was. Batgirl follows until she sees a truck, reminding her of the actual moment they first met. She finds a cell phone left in the front seat of the truck, and follows Paris' directions to the real gift. It only takes a few moments for her to find the lifeless body of his uncle stuffed in the closet. The biggest crime boss in Gotham is deceased, and now she must escape the building full of angry men with guns. Batman intervenes in the nick of time, and she is ashamed she didn't follow his command. He tells her she's not doing this with the right mindset because she hasn't been pushed far enough to see the void. She works for him because he's been doing it longer, and she needs to follow his command. She tells him he's being self-righteous and egotistical for thinking he is better than her. She starts a fight and flips him over her head, ending up on top of him. She realizes what she's done, kisses him, and takes off her mask and top. She reports to her friend that she finally slept with the yoga guy, and it was wonderful like fireworks but he has been avoiding her ever since. She wonders if maybe it was too soon. She visits a cafe for coffee and overhears that the manhunt for Paris, France is still ongoing. When she walks out, she overhears a man telling his girlfriend that she's too clingy and that he needs space. In a burst of frustration, she picks him up and throws him in the bushes. Sitting on a rooftop with pigeons, she decides to call Batman. He tells her that he's at the docks on a lead to find Paris, but doesn't want her to join. She asks about their partnership after Paris is caught, and following Batman's silence, she pleads with him to forget about what happened so that everything can go back to the way it was. He says they'll talk later, and hangs up. Immediately after, a rocket strikes him in the Batmobile. Batgirl sees the explosion. Paris France fires another rocket at Batman, but he is still alive, although he got a nasty splinter. He pulls it out and finds a place to hide. With men right on his tail, Batgirl shows up on her bike wielding a roped hook. With the hook around his neck, she drags Paris around on her bike before punching his face repeatedly. He lies unconscious, and she wonders if she eliminated him. She didn't, and he was taken into custody pronouncing his love for Batgirl. She meets with Batman late at night to give him her Batgirl costume. She says she understands the difference between protecting the city, or just the one special person you care about. She saw the void Batman talked about, and knew she was done with the Batgirl chapter of her life. Batman arrives at a spooky crime scene, per the request of Commissioner Gordon. The corpses were murdered three years prior, and the agent brings up a dentist convention where several attendees disappeared after emptying out their bank accounts. This leads Batman to believe that the Joker is to blame. Barbara returns from a jog, and answers her dad's phone call. He tells her he can't make it that night because he's having a meeting with someone work-related. Batman visits with the Joker to ask him some questions, but discovers that the Joker is being impersonated, and no longer imprisoned. At that moment, he's meeting with a man selling a carnival location, and decides to pay full price for it, claiming that money is no longer an issue. The Joker has a flashback to when he returned home to his pregnant wife, after failing to dazzle the talent scouts when he screwed up a punchline. She can't hide her disappointment, and he snaps, because all he wants is to be able to provide for his family. 
his wife assures him that he can find something in the three months before the baby is due. Their neighbor has sympathy for the wife and child, but only disdain for the man of the house, looking at him like he's a failure. He is determined to make enough money for them to move away, and rants about girls that make the same amount on the street over a weekend, without having to tell a punchline. Back in the present, the Joker bids farewell to the carny seller, but it turns out he's just another corpse, like the others Batman looked at. He stares at pictures of the Joker, trying to figure out what he's going to do next. Batman expresses his confusion to Alfred, saying even after all these years, the two mortal enemies hardly know each other. Barbara's dad, Commissioner Gordon, is doing work at her apartment and changing some things around in his Catwoman scrapbook. He talks about the Joker back when he was just robbing banks. There's a knock at the door and Barbara answers it, expecting her workout buddy. It's the Joker pointing a gun at her waist. He wastes no time pulling the trigger. Barbara falls back onto the glass table and her father is beaten up and taken away. The Joker rambles to her about life, his way of thinking, and that her father will be top of the bill. Then, he undresses and has his way with her. Young Joker agrees to help two men complete a heist for a cut of the money. They plan to break into the chemical plant he used to work at, and then into the playing card company. They tell him he's going to wear the Red Hood's mask, which makes him question how he'll be able to see without any eye holes. He starts doubting himself, but the men convince him he'll only do this one heist to change the course of his life for the better. Barbara is in the hospital after being shot by the Joker. The doctor pricks her feet with a pin, concluding that she'll never walk again. Batman hears that she was naked when she was found. He decides to speak to her, and she wakes up when she hears his voice. She tells him that the Joker kidnapped her father and claimed he was going to top the bill, but she doesn't know what that means. Gordon is chained up and brought to the Joker naked, forced to listen to him rant about how life goes from lighthearted and carefree, like a carnival, to dark and repulsive, full of memories you'd rather forget. He contemplates whether or not it's possible to deny reason itself and lock away those disgusting memories from the past. He tells Gordon to remember that when a train of thought is headed for dark places in your past memories, there's always madness. Young Joker meets with the men to discuss business when the cops arrive to question him. The pair are worried they're in trouble, but he tells them he was just informed that his wife and unborn child passed away in a freak electrocution accident. He tells them he can't go through with the heist because there's no point anymore. They threaten him, demanding he shows up or he'll be joining his wife beyond the grave. Batman is attempting to find the escaped Joker, but everyone he interrogates reports that he's been lying low, keeping his location a mystery. Gordon is dressed in a wig and told to play along with the Joker's pretend court hearing. They talk about a crime that never receives consequences for what he's done, has complete disregard for the law, and treats people like meat. Gordon is encouraged to throw the law book at the guilty and despicable man, so he throws it at the Joker, only for a Batman cutout to appear. The Joker says that the man Gordon considers a friend is the one on trial. Batman meets with women on the street, and they tell him they haven't seen the Joker lately, which is out of character. He might have another woman to play with. The Batman signal shines in the night sky. Gordon is still being held prisoner while the Joker performs a song for him with his freak show minions. He is forced to see pictures of his injured and exposed daughter. Batman receives the Joker's carnival ticket and invitation from the police, finally knowing where to find him. Gordon is frozen with his eyes open, and the Joker orders him to be taken back to his cell. Young Joker puts on the red hood and cape to lead the thieves where they need to go. They are ambushed by unexpected security guards, and his accomplices are eliminated. When Batman arrives, Young Joker falls into a vat of acid, leaving him with completely deformed and disturbing facial features. Batman arrives at the carnival and starts facing Joker's carnies one by one. He outsmarts them one way or another until he finds the Joker and frees Jim Gordon. The Joker runs off, and Gordon asks about his daughter. Batman reports that Barbara is okay, and the police are on the way. He walks off to find the Joker, and Gordon calls out to remind him to handle this by the book, to show the Joker their way works. Batman is getting sick of playing games as the Joker torments him in a house of mirrors. He's talking nonsense, and only feeding into Batman's anger. The Joker tries to figure Batman out, telling him their pasts could be awfully similar. If he went crazy, certainly Batman could, and then he could realize that life is a big joke. Batman tells him that ordinary people don't crack or slip into madness when confronted with painful memories come. Commissioner Gordon reminded Batman to use self-control, despite the Joker's horrendous actions against his own daughter. The Joker finally accepts defeat after being pushed through a window and discovering he's only holding a prop gun. Batman refuses to stoop to his level and tells the Joker he doesn't want to hurt or eliminate him. He tells him he doesn't know what messed up his life, but offers him his hand in friendship and support, so that perhaps they don't have to remain enemies. The Joker declines and says it's too late for that. He tells Batman a joke about two men that escaped the loony bin. One jumps across the gap between two buildings with ease, but the other doesn't think he can make it. The first guy tells his friend that he'll make him a flashlight bridge to walk across, but the other friend asks him if he takes him for a fool. 
because he knows he'll just turn it off once he's halfway across. Batman actually laughs with the Joker. Barbara is adjusting to her new life in a wheelchair, while preparing for her next job working from home to assist her father and Batman fight crime in Gotham City.